Welcome everyone to episode 422 of the Thumbstick Athletes Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. I'm Eric. Today's topic is going to be our Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses Black Eagle spoiler cast. And uh, Will is supposed to be on for this. He's not out of work just yet. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to, and because it's a spoiler cast, we're going to be moving the main segment till the end of the episode. Uh, so I will let you know before that starts. So if you haven't played Fire Emblem or if you haven't played the Black Eagle's House or what have you, you can avoid all spoilers by just cutting off the episode at that point. There won't be any new information or anything uh, after that. So um, we are going to do the main segment last. Uh, Eric, do you have anything you want to tease for later on in the episode? Uh, just lots of Fire Emblem. Uh, other Fire Emblem that's not Three Houses Fire gotcha. Emblem. Gotcha. Very nice, yeah. Uh, I played a bit, little bit more Fire Emblem. I, not as much as I would like because we're still down our Joy-Cons from when I sent them in to get them fixed. We, they haven't come back yet, unfortunately. Uh, and my son has monopolized the Joy-Cons that we do have. And anytime he puts a Switch down to do something else and I have a minute to play and I start playing... He either says, Dad, I was going to play Breath of the Wild. Or he'll pester me the entire time I'm playing. I'm like, are you almost done? Like, I just want to play Breath of the Wild. And then like, you, uh, you get the Joy-Cons back, and yep. I'm sure he no longer is interested in playing. Yeah, he'll play for 20 minutes and then put yeah. it down. But I know I know, as soon as I pick it up, he's going to want to play it again. So yeah. it's it's been very aggravating. Um, so I haven't played as much Fire Emblem as I would like. Uh, but a bit i'm still playing pokemon uranium which i really like and then i also played gears pop oh. which is a mobile game which i'll talk about um if i you've... remember making fun of that game yeah like one of the first times it's... i was on the show it's worth making fun of yes <laughs> okay i awesome. mean if, if you played clash royale did you ever no. play clash okay that's no. it's like the, the, the same only thing. mobile game i've ever really gotten into is this fire emblem heroes which mm. i still play like probably an hour a day yeah it's uh I'll, I'll talk about it it's it's okay it's not bad by any stretch but it's got the usual mobile game trappings so all right uh, i'll be talking about that i think that's everything we can get we're gonna do so as i said we're gonna do this out of order uh the main segment will be last i'll let everyone know you know when the spoilers start start flying and we can uh so you can cut out or listen or, or what have you so we're gonna do start with the blitz um I've actually got a bunch because Gamescom was this week. Uh, I, we usually like to do an episode to cover Gamescom, but uh, we'll just have a lengthy nibble bit segment instead. Sure. The first is that The Witcher 3 for the Nintendo Switch has a release date. It's going to be on the 15th of October, 2019. So soon. I know. I was very surprised it was going to be that soon. Uh, I'm in for it, though. I actually watched um, the Digital Foundry footage of it and their their breakdown of of the performance of it does it look like it runs well I yes haven't, i've been like not tuned into to news this week i only have a couple things so. okay yeah no it looks like it runs really well like surprisingly well for what it is and they apparently at games i think it was at gamescom cd project red brought brought in a bunch of like journalists and stuff to try it uh and they purposely showed them the areas of the game that were going to be problem areas and let them play like play it in handheld play it in, in docked mode to see like what it was like novigrad uh, specifically was one of the areas they mentioned and it seemed to be running at a consistent like mid 20s to 30 frames per second which is not ideal but uh you know i, I played it at 60 on my pc but for playing it in handheld when i can actually you know play it it's uh, everyone seems to be very impressed with it from what i That's gather awesome. so uh, yeah um apparently it took them about a year to do all the all the porting so I'm very, very excited for that one. I'm definitely going to play it again. You know, having just having spent a little over 80 hours uh, playing Fire Emblem, I'm like, it's easy <laughs> to put that much time into, like, another game that I really want to play again. Yeah. So. Uh, and the eShop version supposedly clocks in at a hair over 28 gigabytes, which includes all the DLC, too, uh, which how is also space? fairly impressive. Do you know how much space just comes on the Switch? on a stock uh stock switch yeah it's supposed to be 32 gigabytes but it's okay okay it, 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 it would be it roughly 25 small. to 28 after the os okay I, I know it feels small yeah like i feel like i can like i buy pretty much everything digitally i feel like i can only have one or two games installed at a time maybe yeah uh micro sd cards are cheap now and i because yeah. i have 128 gigabyte micro sd card i probably have it because i've been recently more buying more digitally uh, it pro probably is half full. If 
okay. I had to guess. I, sh I should probably look into that because you know, anytime I want to play something else, I gotta delete. Yeah. Reinstall. Like even with my decent internet and no caps, like it's still a pain to have to wait like 30 minutes to play a game. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah. I hear you. Uh, yeah, it's 28 gigabytes, which I don't, I don't think would fit on a stock like Switch with without any game saves on it or anything. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, like I said, that includes all the DLC. I think on my PC it was over 100 gigabytes, so they were able to compress it pretty well, which is very nice. Uh, so that was the first one. The next one is Devil May Cry. Five is now on Game Pass as of right now. Uh, Will and Eric, of course, adored this game earlier this year. And there's a few other impressive games coming to both Xbox and PC Gamer Pass, including uh, Game Pass, including Kingdom Come Deliverance, Stellaris, and then new release Blair Witch is coming out, and then Dead Cells is also coming out uh, early September. For the uh, so, Game Pass? Game Pass, yeah. I'm, it's like the best money I spend, I think. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, I I think it was last month, Humble, Humble Monthly had their early unlock was Kingdom Come Deliverance. And I meant all month to buy it, and of course I forgot. If I don't buy it right away, I forget about it, and Same. I didn't. I didn't, and I regretted not getting it. But now it's going to be on PC Game Pass, so I don't have to worry about so it. Uh, so there was that one. Uh, Nintendo had an in indie showcase last Monday, showing off some of the the upcoming indie releases. Uh, Super Hot and both Hot Hotline Miami games came out that same ver that very same day which was Monday the 19th. Uh, coming soon is going to be Risk of Rain 2 and Torchlight 2. Creature in the Well is also coming out soon. Out in the fall is going to be Freedom Fighter, Blasphemous, and Ori in the Blind Forest Definitive Edition, which is cool. But then they also had uh, quite a few awesome-looking indies. I'll just go over the names, and then we'll cover them more in depth when we do our, uh, our Fall Games preview. But one was Tourist which was kind of like a voxel-looking uh, game that reminded me of a Super Nintendo game whose name escapes me at the moment. Uh, Skellboy, Munchkin, Quacked Quest, Northgard, which I've had... I feel like I've had that on my wish list forever. Me too. Yeah, that looks pretty sweet. Trine 4, One Finger Death Punch 2, Spark Light, Cat Quest 2, Earth Knight, uh, Close to the Sun, and uh, Kine, Roki, Europa... Hypercharged on Box, What the Golf, uh, Dungeon Defenders Awakened, Best Friend, Eastward, Skater XL, which is a new, like, uh, it's almost like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater looking game. Oh, cool. Spirit Fair and Fogs, P-H-O-G-S. So a lot of indie stuff coming out in the fall and then early next year. Uh, some of those games were really good looking, too. So. Hey, more stuff on the Switch, the better. Yeah, oh yeah, totally. Uh, GameStop recently announced that they have laid off over 100 employees, largely from its Texas-based corporate headquarters and over half of its Game Informer staff in Minneapolis. Yeah, this one's crazy. Like, I listen to a lot of other gaming podcasts mm -hmm. um, with like people who used to work at Game Informer, uh -huh. and apparently this came out of absolutely nowhere. Oh, really? Like this? Yeah, this was with no warning whatsoever. Huh. Um, it's it's crazy. Yeah, the was the head editor was someone i recognized floating uh yeah, and, in, andy, in, McNamara. andy McNamara. Yeah, i recognize yeah. his name floating around for you know game space and yeah he seemed pretty pretty shook up over it you know obviously it wasn't his choice to lay off yeah. those people and he's he was trying working hard to get get people you know yeah well you know he jobs actually, again he actually started the whole thing oh did he, he really was, yeah he was a gamestop employee and then like sometime in the 90s he was like i want to do this and he did that's awesome yeah it's crazy Okay, I pro I've probably heard him on other like game podcasts and stuff, and seen his yeah. stuff floating around. He's been around a long time. Yeah. Uh, so that's unfortunate news. Hopefully, GameStop can can right the ship a little bit. I don't think they will. <laughs> I don't either. It's it's tough for 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 phys that physical stuff, unless they go the collection route. Like I know collecting is still kind of a big thing in the gaming world. So, but then you know you can't have a store in every small town. You know. No, you can't. Uh, oh, and then this was very exciting, and you're not going to believe this when you hear it, but there's been some news on Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. No. Yes, I know. That's what or, I said. Or, is it a release date? It is a Steam early access release, March oh, 2020. Hmm. March not, 2020. Yeah, not quite what I was hoping for, but hey, I'll take I'll take it. Uh, I won't buy it right away. I'll let 
it be an early access for a little bit. I'll wait for a sale probably, and then I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully buy it before the actual release and play it on the actual release. So. Man, I feel like I've been waiting for that game for a decade. Like, yeah, I did, found... When did the first one come out? Because Not... I remember playing it when I was, like, I don't know. It's pretty old. It came out, I want to say, like, mid-2000s. I remember playing... I feel like I remember playing Mountain Blade before it was Mountain Blade Warband. Okay, yeah, there was Mountain Blade. Mountain Blade Warband was, like, a... I don't, I don't want to call it an expansion, but it was you know slightly different it added like firearms and stuff like that yeah it looks like 2010 so it's been almost a decade okay uh wait actually first one released in 2008 so that's probably closer to when i played it okay gotcha yeah Yeah, and uh i came to it kind of late and when i started playing mountain blade warband they had already i believe announced mountain blade 2 banner lord just that they were working on it and that was it so. A great game. Yeah. Like, genu- genuinely a great game. Yeah. I remember putting a ton of hours into it. I still say the Game of Thrones mod for that too is is spectacular. Mm-hmm. It's probably the probably the best Game of Thrones game now that I think about it. <laughs> you're you're probably not wrong. Well, e- either that one or the Crusader Kings two mod. I was just gonna say that game. Crusader yeah. Kings two is up there too. That one's really now, good. That's the only reason I boot up Crusader Kings two anymore. Yeah. So. Yeah, to play the Game of Thrones mod. Yeah. I have, let's, you know what, let's check my hours in Steam, and then I'll tell you how many achievements I have, and I'll <laughs> tell you how much I play that mod. All right, I have 11 achievements and 871 hours. Oh, in Crusader Kings nice. <laughs> nice. So yeah. that means at least, like, 860 of those 871 hours are Game of Thrones. Nice. Which actually released fully. Did oh, really? That? No, I didn't. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what day it was because I think it was this week. Okay. Wow. Let's see. That's cool. Yeah, I think I only have I think I have like 240 hours in Crusader Kings, but it could it could easily be more than that if I didn't feel the need to constantly be playing new things. Uh, I would just sink endless amounts of time into that. That's great. Yeah, it's uh, it's officially like at what they're saying should be one of their last versions, 2.0. Okay. Wow. Huh. I'll have to check that out then. It's pretty crazy. Seven years of development. Wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think I have. Oh, one more. Oddworld Soulstorm has announced via Twitter that it will be coming to PC via the Epic Game Store exclusively. Um, that is going to be the remake of one of the Oddworld games, and I can't remember which one off the top of my head, but um, I'm looking forward to that. I remember very briefly playing the Oddworld games. Uh, back on the pl- in PlayStation days, and I have some of them on Steam right now. I would like an excuse to go back and play them because I always liked the commercials for them. Is uh, is it? Do you know if it's a remake of Abe's Odyssey? It might be Abe's Odyssey. That might be the one. Yeah. Because that was that's my favorite Oddworld game. Okay. And I hadn't heard of this Soulstorm thing. I had neither until they announced that they're coming exclusively to the Epic Game Store. And yeah. Now it said, yeah, the true sequel to Abe's Odyssey will have a. Oh wow. Okay. I mean, count me in now. Yep. Yeah, I'm. I'm not thrilled with the Epic Game Store thing, but I'm not either. But then they started giving away a whole bunch of games. Later. Yeah, that's the, less, the one reason I boot angry. up my. That's the one reason I boot up my Epic Games client because I haven't played. I played Fortnite like three times, and that was it. Yeah, so. I never. Like, I think I downloaded it and never played Fortnite. Yeah, it's not bad. It's just not my. <laughs> not my. Not my bag. Uh, that's all I have for Nibble Bits. What do you What do you got for Nibble Bits? Um, they announced that the Persona Five Royal is going to have new endings. Oh, cool! And they're going to uh, fix some of the pacing and a couple of the later, like dungeons. Did you play Persona Five? I did not. Okay. I did not. Um, toward the end, there's like a couple of the palaces that like really drag poorly. Um, and uh, evidently they've fixed that. Um, so that's cool. Uh, are you are you gonna revisit it? Oh, definitely. Nice. Definitely. It's 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 one of the it's one of the games I actually finished. So that tells me I should definitely go back and play it again. Right. Um, what else? There was one other thing. It wasn't actually nibble bit. It was just hey, this looks really cool. Oh, Greedfall. Oh yeah, I've been Have reading you seen a little the videos bit. For that? I haven't seen the videos, but I've been reading a little bit about it. it seems it seems very interesting. 
yeah, I'm suddenly super into it. Like, I, at first I wasn't, I, it, I didn't seem super interested, but I don't know. Like, the videos I've seen and the stuff I've been reading, I'm, I'm down. It looks like it could be really good. Yeah, so it's supposed to be, like, uh, Age of Exploration, but, like, very mythological. Yeah. Too. So there's yeah, going like, to be a lot like of some... exploration type of stuff in, in there. Yeah, like, some of the videos I've seen, it's almost like uh, colonial Dark Souls. <laughs> oh, cool. It's, like, it's really really interesting but huh. I'm, I'm definitely down that's is that supposed to be an mmorpg or is it like a open world single player rpg i'm pretty sure it's open world single player but oh. i'm gonna google that real fast yeah um i know it's are you familiar with the term euro drink euro jank when it comes to games no like it games made by european developers that are usually kind of uh i'm just janky like the gothic series okay yeah um, I know stuff like that it looks like it's going to be one of those and i love gotcha. i love that uh let's see what well, is that is that like risen too yeah okay exactly yeah, gotcha that, that's that's like the perfect description for euro jank okay i didn't um, know that's what it was called yeah <laughs> well, that's that's what i've heard um no greedfall looks like it's a single player action role playing game oh that's fantastic that's even better because uh, you know i mmorpgs i just i just can't really do although i have do have an, a quick announcement to make during during our week so uh, but that's not a, that's a game type i really just can't do right now because of the endless time sinks that they are yeah the only one i really play much at all is final fantasy 14 okay um and i'm not even to the end of that i'm actually playing it for the story which is amazing yeah believe it or not so i've heard great things yeah guild wars 2 was the last one i i was able to do and it just it, you know i have six seven hundred eight hundred hours so i was like i can't yeah it's i've got to do other things yeah there's other games like i got a life yeah. yeah once my kids get older and get into that stuff then it's a different story but for now probably the hardest mmo players i know are um like adults my parents age whose kids are out of the house yeah yeah so. well one of my friends in high school him and his dad always played everquest together like nice. a lot so yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be that's, as long as my kids are into them if they're not into them then then that's fine but okay uh anything else uh i think that's all i have for nibble bits all right uh how was your week uh my week was pretty good um i got sick like in the middle of the week which super sucked uh-huh. um but other than that uh you know it was all right yeah yeah how about you dan i got a couple things so me and will decided not to get rad right away we were going to do an episode on rad i think like uh, next week uh it reviewed kind of average so we, yeah, we I actually decided against it too yeah we saw the open critic stuff like, figured we'd wait a little while I'll, I'll get it it might be coming to game pass since it's a double fine game and double fine is owned by microsoft right now so that's that's actually my hope is i can play either on pc or xbox um uh on game pass um you know my my gaming schedule is kind of loaded right now anyway and september is uh really bloated with games that i want to get so we figured we would hold off on that um also i'm probably going to be abandoning the thumbstick athletes facebook page um for whatever reason when i i made a concerted effort for uh, the early part of this year to post fairly regularly on our facebook and it routinely only ever showed our post to like 20 or 30 people. Uh, I think they were trying to force us into paying to have our people who follow us be shown our stuff. Uh, so I don't like that. So uh, I'm going to revive our Instagram feed. So our social media platforms of choice will be Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Twitter, is the, it'll be the same. Like I try to keep stuff going on there. But uh, I'm also going to be doing stuff on Instagram. So follow yeah, us on instagram you're good with the twitter yeah I, I try to at least do the nibble bits because a lot of people are, or i don't know a lot of people but if everyone's looking for sources for our the stuff that we talk about during nibble bits i like to have those on there i like to try to post when the episode's going to be on there if i can um i would like to get better at all that it's not consistent enough um but yeah definitely definitely instagram i'll pro- pro- try to post there a couple times a week and then uh twitter hopefully ideally every day there'll be stuff on our on our twitter feed so um there was that oh i had stuff that i didn't write down of course i had one more nibble bit okay let's hear it 
Final Fantasy VIII Remastered? What? Oh, um, yeah, you didn't hear about that? No, the first I heard about it was this week. Okay, yeah, I think they announced it a couple weeks ago, if I remember holy, correctly. Holy cow. I'm, yeah. I'm actually really interested. I feel like I'm one of the only people that likes Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah, it, I mean, it was okay. I, I want to say I played it a couple different times and only ever got, like, halfway through. Yeah. And then just abandoned it for whatever reason. Um, obviously, it wasn't, at least for me, wasn't as good as seven, so it didn't hold my attention quite as well. Sure. Uh, it was kind of sandwiched between seven and tactics, and then nine, all of which I yeah, really loved. Yeah, which are all very good. Um, but I, I don't feel like I was ever giving it a fair shake, you know, as its own standalone Might game. Might be worth so. going back to. Mm-hmm. And apparently, they're adding that like, uh, like you can speed up time, like they did for the Zodiac Age. Oh, really? Which is cool. Yeah, which will help. Which I think will help that game a lot. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess it's old news, but final fantasy 8 remastered super cool yeah that, that's that's awesome uh yeah i'll definitely definitely get that at some point i want to actually have all the all the old final fantasy games on my switch at some point just because it's just so much easier to play stuff that way <laughs> it really is um yeah so i actually wanted to have will on to talk about this because he can give a little bit better uh, of an idea of what happened but uh, my parents pool was crushed by a big tree branch in a storm oh, a couple no. days ago yeah uh, not the whole thing, just the back end was crushed by a giant pine tree branch. It Jeez. folded over some of the uprights and, and like caved in the side of the pool a little bit. So uh, our, our swimming for the summer is done. For now, which is unfortunate because yeah, that's something my entire family likes to do. And the, we take the dog swimming because he loves yeah. it too. So They've had a tough go because uh, <laughs> earlier in the year a, a, tree, a tree fell on the house. Oh, and man. crushed part of the roof so they haven't had good luck with with storms and trees Jeez, might, might be time to just take all the trees down in the yard yeah that's not a bad idea the the big one in the front is probably okay but they have another pine tree yeah. on the side yard that was next to the one that fell on the house that probably oh, could come down at any point yeah i mean my parents finally did that like maybe geez probably 15 or 20 years ago now and like they ended up taking like I think 26 pine trees oh, out of like man. just the front yard or something crazy like that wow they had one of those houses you like could could not see from the street yeah and, like it was not a long driveway right <laughs> so yeah it's crazy it's nice to just get all that cleared out and yeah because i mean you never know when you're gonna have a wicked storm and it's gonna crush your house or crush a car or crush a pool yeah exactly uh so yeah there was that one um like I said, I wanted to get Will's perspective on it. He he still lives there with mom and dad, so I gotcha. wanted to get his his thoughts on on it. Give us the good details. Yeah, I've only seen pictures, so. Oh man. Uh, of why I watch Digital Foundries, thing. Um, I'm starting to finally organize and unpack and stuff the the recording studio. It's been a mess since we moved in, and that you have to stuff over boxes and. St- stuff and i build my computers down here too when 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 i have orders so yeah. i want to get all that stuff organized and not scattered all over all, all over the basement so i'll post pictures when i get done we have to paint in here because it's all just white uh yeah. except for the green screen behind me which is green but i want to paint this wall like actually like a lime green oh nice uh so you yeah actually have a green screen yeah because this this is a little too dark for because of the color coloring in here or the lighting in here rather it's a little too dark it, it still works okay but um it's also it's just a like it's almost like a sheet material so it's wavy and stuff and i don't have i don't know it's just a pain i want to have the whole thing green so oh i have a funny story yeah let's hear it does uh does Corey listen to the podcast yes yes he does awesome uh i have a story for Corey. nice um so you remember he was upset that somebody went on one of his mario maker levels oh yeah left that left that comment yeah if i could do this twice i would (laughs) yes uh one night i was just feeling vindictive randomly for no reason and i went and i found like that comment Uh and i went to one of that guy's levels Uh uh-huh and left that exact same comment <laughs> if i could do this twice i would he, he reported me to nintendo oh no I, way i have a black mark on my record from from <laughs> that from that punk because i went and tried to defend Corey's honor oh that's oh man he's gonna <laughs> love that story he's gonna absolutely love that that's uh, his, his levels were really bad too oh were they really oh they were super bad mm. yeah should not have left that comment, man. 
I, I wonder if it was a kid. It's got to be a kid, right? Well, I mean, it's got to be a kid. Right. Like, an adult, I don't think, would have gone and reported me. They just would have left some comment like, who you, man? Right, right. Oh, wow, that's a great story. Yeah. Well, I mean, he does listen, but I will I will make sure he, he listens and, and hears that. That's that's funny stuff. Yep. Uh, uh, one other thing. As my, my, I got back into playing... Uh, why are you barking? <laughs> I got back into playing Smash Brothers with the kids at night before they go to bed. Awesome. Uh, it's really fun. Um, but one thing I did want to say is if you're going to play video games with your kids, I, I've kind of been doing this since we started playing games together, uh, both Mario Kart and Smash Brothers and what have you, but uh, don't ever let them win. Oh, no. Because once they actually do win, it is quite the accomplishment for them, and they are very proud of themselves. So. Yeah. Um, not, not only that, but that, <laughs> you know, they're going to get to a point where they're going to beat you all the time. So mm-hmm. you might as well get your wins when you can, when they're still young. That's, that's I also, that. but yeah, I like, you know, my, my daughter won, I wasn't playing, but my daughter won uh, smash brothers. She was playing with my wife and my, my son, uh, and she won a match and she was like the proudest you could be. It was, ador- awesome. it was adorable. Yeah. So that's the joy of video games. Dan. Exactly. Right in front of your eyes. Yep. I was I was very proud. That rocks. But yeah, starting uh yeah, my son's getting getting pretty decent. He plays his link exclusively, so Oh wow. He's almost beaten me a couple times. Uh I do always do random just because I feel like it wouldn't be fair if I played my main all the time. I've gotten my main a couple times, but um yeah, he's he's we've had a couple sudden deaths where I I was lucky enough to hit him first uh to be, to beat him, so Man. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm terrible fun. at Smash, so uh-huh. I'm sure my kids will just wreck me constantly. I know I was the worst when we when, when it first came out. We had Smash Weekend when we went up to Corey's, mm-hmm. uh, but I I don't I, I don't want to say I'm the best, but I, I I won't be the worst. Like if we ever do that again, just because I played so much, you know, I play with my kids. I play the World of Light stuff. Yeah. Um, so I've played more. I know Will hasn't played it in months. I don't think Corey's played it in months. I don't I don't think Eric's played in months. So. I'm the only one that's continually played it, so. You're going to be the best then. I hope so. Um, we never ended up actually. We never played played Mario Kart, which I know I'm the I'm the best out of us at. All right. Um. So, uh, that <laughs> that's my one claim to fame. Um. I think that's all I got for, for my week. Oh, I just closed my, my app. Um. Okay. Yeah. Let's get into uh, what we played. So I'll let, I'll let you start since you played uh, Fire Emblem Awakening. I want to hear your your thoughts yes. on that so far. Uh, I've played the first like maybe third of Fire Emblem Awakening t- twice now. Mm-hmm. Um. Because again, like I, I tried to play it first on an emulator, it just wasn't great. So I went and got it. Like actually bought a DS. Um, to play it. Uh, and I played eight hours of it just over the last two days. Um, Fire Emblem Awakening is amazing. Uh-huh. Uh, and I think I might actually like it more than I liked Three Houses. Okay. Um, which I think says something, because I love Three Houses. Yeah. Like, and I'm definitely going to go back and play that. Like, I think maybe I've just discovered a, a franchise that I should have been playing for years. Sure. Um, essentially, but... Uh, yeah, I'm. I don't know if you want spoilers for Awakening. I mean, the games. It's been out for. I think it came out in 2012. Now, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am on the mission where you get Henry. Okay. If you remember. Yep. I'm sure you played it to to the end. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm on the mission where you get Henry, and it's like behind me, suspended right now, and I am definitely gonna go back and finish that up tonight. Nice. Um, great game. Yeah. Awakening. Awakening rocks, and I can't wait to try Fates now too. So. There you go. Yeah. The thing that Awakening does that that uh, Three Houses... Awakening and, and to a lesser extent Fates, that Three Houses doesn't is the, the romance and the results of those romances. Sure, um, and I, I haven't seen that yet, mm-hmm. and I know I know you're able to get the kid somehow. Like, yeah. I don't know how they explain that through the story or anything. Uh-huh. Um, but, like, I mean, I already... Most of my characters are already married off to each other. Okay. Like, just ran like i think my main guy isn't but like ev- everyone else has has paired off already okay so it's it's kind of 
kind of wild. And like some of those are really cute too. Yeah, like, yeah. Like it's it's really like really sweet. Some of them are actually really touching. Like yep. uh, I think my uh, Longku is that his name? Longku, yes. He's yeah. The swordsman guy. Yep. Like he he and Mary Bell hit S support. Okay. And, like that was that was actually like really nice and touching because nice. like Longku has like a problem with being around women and i haven't figured out why that is yet uh -huh. um but like i don't know it was just it was just really sweet yeah like it's, oh, that's it's, cool. it's cool the supports are awesome man like great game i wish i'd played this eight years ago yeah uh, yeah i mean it it sold me on the franchise because i i had only ever heard of fire emblem before that i yeah. hadn't played any of the other older games and yeah that was like okay i'm a i'm a fan of the franchise now fates fates is good uh fates you'll have to spend 100 bucks to play all i've of them, already but... i already got them oh that's so right you told I'm me that ready. yeah i i got them because of the ridiculous game GameStop deal right now so uh -huh. yeah. yeah i'm that... like i'm ready to roll that's good too I, I i don't think it's quite as good as as uh awakening but it's that's good too so sure. and i know with fates it's kind of like three houses i'm gonna have to play it three times yeah yeah i actually so... think yes it's three times yeah yeah yep so that's gonna be you know i guess my next week is kind of planned out for me i don't know, I don't know what comes out in september but i'm taking a break yeah yeah I mean, it's good too like like we I, we talked about this briefly before we started but having it on handheld just makes it so you can play anytime and yeah. uh you know the 3ds is similar to the switch and you could just close the lid and a game is you know locked where you left off wherever you left off it doesn't matter where you left off it's it's going to be right there ready for you to pick up and play it again a minute or two here and there if you only have it but you know it's there yeah. whenever you need it it's great oh one thing i did want to say about uh i forgot to talk about during my week is i because we talked about this beforehand that's why i, I can never know what <laughs> i never remember what we talk about before an episode or during um we but i have not yet got my joy cons back from right. nintendo so i'm still waiting for that every time ups comes rolling through the neighborhood i I peer out the window like a creep, hoping that he's going to stop and drop off my Joy-Cons. Um, oh, no. Did I talk about this at the beginning of the episode? I don't remember now. I think I might have. But, yeah, um, I, I haven't gotten as much playing time in with, with Fire Emblem because my Joy-Cons are not back yet. So it's very, very aggravating. But, anyway, uh, did you play anything else? Um, I played some Total War Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Oh, yeah, that just came out, right? Uh, I think it came out a few months ago, oh, but okay. I like I just I just now got around to it. It was on like a crazy sale somewhere. I don't remember. Um, maybe it was half off or something. Oh wow. Uh, I think it might be. I, I put like maybe 10, 15 hours into it this week. I think it might be the best Total War game since like Shogun Two. Oh really? Um. Wow. Yeah, it's there's something there's something really cool. Um. Well, it's like the way they've made it almost more character driven uh -huh. um, than the previous titles. Because like if it's on the the romance mode instead of the records mode, which is what they call them, like the your hero units are heroes and like they can tear through an army by themselves. Um, it's very cool. It's it's good. I, I I would definitely suggest it. Okay. Yeah. For, for anybody who's into Total War. Yeah, I haven't played. I haven't played a lot of the Total War games since the first Total, the to Total War Shogun, Shogun Total War. Yeah, that uh, was, was the one I, I ever played. That was the one I played the most of. Um, yeah. I've been wanting to get into the series, but again, it's these really lengthy uh, yeah. games that I tend to lose myself in and not play anything else. I try try not to do that, but I would like to pick up the series again at some point. Yeah, well, one thing I can say about Three Kingdoms, which I have definitely enjoyed so far, is that I'm more inclined to play the real-time battles and mm -hmm. not just auto resolve stuff okay. because they they feel like they take maybe half as long as they used to oh that's good like i'm i'm plowing through battles in like maybe five to ten minutes whereas before it would drag to like 30 35 minutes every time um i don't know what they did there to make that happen but i'm i love it okay needed needed to happen nice so I feel like it's it's now something I can kind of hop in and give like an hour or two, instead of where before like I I would feel like I would need more time to, to play it. So I just right. put it off and not. Okay. Um, yeah. Nice. Uh, anything else? Uh, no, I think that's all I played. Okay. 
Uh, so I played a couple things. Um, since I haven't been able to play as much Switch, I've been looking for mobile games to play, and I've been playing at least a little bit uh, Gears Pop. So Gears Pop is the uh, Funko Pop Gears of War game that just came out on mobile devices, I think on Wednesday, maybe Thursday. Uh, it doesn't matter, but it's basically, if anyone's, we, we used to play this, uh, the Thumbstick Athletes anyway, uh, Clash Royale, if anyone remembers our Clash Royale phase, it's very much like that. So it's it's an online game, two opposing sides. There's the like center, like there's the center. There's two lanes on either side where you can you know collect cover, and then there's the the center like tower, I guess for lack of a better word, and then one on the left and one on the right, and you have to destroy. You have to try, try to destroy the main tower, but if you destroy like one of the towers and the other other person doesn't destroy any towers, then then you win. So okay. Uh, and then it's, 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 you know, you, you send out units based on a re, regenerating uh, timer. So I'll, I have a couple units, like I have Marcus Phoenix as a unit and he's a, he's a five, uh, five timer unit. So, you know, once it ticks up to five or is above five, I can summon him and I drag him out and drop it. Uh, and how far out you can set your units is, is based on how much of the cover you have, uh, ready over over on your side uh and will just said he's ready so i'm gonna add him to the at least oh, i think that was will <laughs> yeah it is perfect timing let's see will will Hello? hey hi what's happening not much my sounding okay yeah you sound fine yeah you're good I am currently uh, walking to the car. Oh, nice. Okay, um, we're we're not we haven't done the main segment yet, so uh, we're just it we're just doing what uh, what we played, and then okay. we we're gonna do the main segment after that. So <laughs> perfect. So it, I timed it, it okay. Yeah, you timed it perfectly. Literally um, perfect timing. Yeah, because I have like two quick games to talk about, and then uh, and then we can get into the main yeah. segment. Sorry, it's been a crazy week. This That's week, fine. So. I've been been very busy. No problem. Anyway, continue. Yeah, so I was uh, I was just talking about Gears Pop, Will. Um, oh, okay. It's it's Clash. It's very much Clash Royale. Really? Yeah, it's very similar. Um, Is, so I can download this right now. Yeah, yeah, it, it's okay. It's not it's not great. It's not terrible. Um, so there's different currencies too. So. Uh, if you win a battle you get a chest and you know there's different kinds of chests you use the crystals to unlock the chests that you earn by doing like daily challenges uh, or you can buy them in the store and you use coins to upgrade your units so obviously uh, when you upgrade a unit it's got it gets more powerful health more powerful attacks yada yada it's all you know very gears of war gears of war skin to it so um it's a decent game if you're looking for something mobile to play to kill a little time um by all means i haven't spent a dime on it and i don't intend on doing so i've actually been doing fairly well at it too um i've gone up a couple tiers in the in the multiplayer thing unfortunately there's not really a single player uh aspect to it other than there's like a little training thing where once you unlock a new hero you can you you know kind of figure out what their moves are in the training thing uh, and then there's a horde mode, which I have not yet tried. You have to be in like a clan or whatever to do that. It's, you know, I guess two people against a computer. Or I don't know if it's maybe two people against two people, but I have not had any experience with that that mode just yet. Um, I don't want to start a clan because uh, it's a thousand coins and I'd rather just level up my units that I have. Yeah. And I don't want to join one because people take things too seriously and I'm kind of just messing around with the game. Although I could probably find that if I wanted. So that's yeah, Gears no, Pop. Was, I don't like the, like in Clash Royale. I was in a clan, but because I didn't participate in enough wars, I got kicked. Yeah. Because uh, they took it way too seriously. Yeah. So I remember I, you talking about that. I totally get that that mindset. It's just a mobile game. Like you're not going to sink all of your time into it. Or money. I don't yeah, want to spend money exactly. on it. Uh, I don't mind spending money on, like, Pokemon Go. I've bought Pokeballs a few times, and I've spent money on uh, Harry Potter Wizards Unite. 
but only to like increase my spell power and it's only a dollar here and there you know i won't i'm not going to drop 10 or 15 or 20 dollars on anything mobile because i'm going to get bored of it so yeah uh, so there's that that I played, and then I'm still playing Pokemon Uranium. So I'm uh, about, f- I just beat the third gym leader, uh, who I had a heck of a time with. Uh, she was the water type Pokemon gym leader, and because I spend the majority or all, I've spent all the time playing at night, I haven't, I hadn't really caught any grass type Pokemon, because a lot of them were not just water but also uh, ground. So like electric mm. electric attacks wouldn't really do anything. Uh, I think I had I had one Pokemon that did electrical attacks, so I had a awful time trying to beat her. It took me like I think I got her on the fourth try finally by uh, by a little bit of luck. Did you get a lucky critical? Uh, no, I so I the the way I had to do it was I had caught an irradiated Pokemon in uh, the abandoned po- power plant. You got people should play this game because it's it's surprisingly good. Uh, I know Corey talked it up years ago when he played it, and uh, everyone ignored him. But I feel like we should stop ignoring Corey when he gives us advice on what to play because I generally like his recommendations. I, I promise, Corey, I will play Enderall at some point. I promise. I, and I will second Enderall. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, finally I listened play. to Corey and played Enderall, and I do I do not regret it. Yeah, exactly. He's not, I don't think he's ever led me astray. Like, true talk to both of you guys, I love you guys, but Corey's game recommendations are always my favorite game recommendations. Yeah, exactly. Always, every single time, man. He, he brings in – he's he's the X Factor, and I, I yeah. he, he's never steered me wrong. I wish I had listened to him before, but, um, but yeah, so I had caught an irradiated Pokemon. So the irradiated Pokemon, their, uh, nuclear type moves are strong against everything, but they're also weak against everything. So it's a very glass cannon type of thing. So I had a level 30, um, uh, Trop, Tropite it was. I don't, I don't know if that's an, a Pokemon in any of the other games or if that's just a, uh, uh, Pokemon Uranium type Pokemon, but they also ignore orders a lot. So it was 50 50 usually if he would attack, even attack, um, oh, which was, it <laughs> was very frustrating, but I did get him to be like pretty effective in the one I had actually ended up winning, um, because he was, he was my strongest Pokemon. He was the one that, uh, did most of the damage to the other Pokemon that I was fighting. And, um, I had a bird type that actually finished, finished the job for me. Um, so that was it was a lot of fun though and uh, the game the writing is surprisingly good in the game there's only a few times where like the language is a little bit weird i don't know if it was poorly translated or if it's just typos or, or what have you but it's it's a surprisingly good game and uh other i i got used to playing it on key, on the keyboard so that's been also very good uh, but yeah give it a shot uh, are there eight gems in that yeah yeah okay mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the how long to beat is like thirty hours, maybe. Uh, so it's a full full fledged Pokemon game. Yep, then. full fledged Pokemon. Uh, yeah, there's uh, there's some some interesting like dark things that are happening in it too. So it's good stuff. Yeah, I'll definitely give it a play. I know I started it a couple of years ago, but I never ended up putting any time in. Yeah, I mean, I wish there was a way you could play it on like an emulator or whatever. Or something like yeah. you know, if I could play it on an emulator on my phone, that would be perfect. But uh, it's only on PC. I'm sure maybe at some point someone will figure out a way to play it. I think someone figured out how to get it on a hacked Switch uh, with Ooh. running running Android. But I'm, I'm not going to bother with that. I wish it was on Switch. Yeah, no, it would be perfect on Switch, but uh, that will never happen unless, like, like I said, <laughs> this, I think this person had gotten the Android emulator running on Switch and <clears throat> excuse me, figured out how to run it on there, but. But yeah, there's a big subreddit for it. Um, it doesn't run great on my computer. Apparently, it's made with one of the RPG makers, an old one. Mm. So it's not meant for modern hardware. So I did some tweaking, and it runs okay, but it's still like pretty, pretty jittery more than it should be. Mm. So uh, I think that's everything. So should we get into the main main event here? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, so yeah, before we do that, I'm gonna warn everyone again that we're gonna be talking about spoilers for the Black Eagles House and Fire Emblem Three Houses. So uh, if you haven't done, 
really we're only doing one specific path there's two paths in the black eagles house too and we're going to be talking about one specific one but yeah this is going to contain spoilers so if you don't want the game spoiled for you you can tune out now there will be no new information uh at this point so uh will i i think i guess we'll start with you um well i guess i'll i'll run through the the beginning of this so apparently there's a way to miss this so what we, what we all did luckily um and i think it's because of attention to detail and making sure we talk to everyone is there's a point when you're playing in the black eagle's house where edelgard asks you if you'll come home with her for some to do something she doesn't tell you what uh, but it turns out she's going home to get herself crowned the emperor of the Adrestian empire because her dad is like sick and dying and she wants to be the emperor so you go home you help you help her do that and that's the the trigger for even having this option apparently um so that doesn't come up i think it, it's is it a few missions or a few months before it even comes up like what how this changed it's like uh maybe three chapters before the time skip two cha- ah, two chapters oh, yeah i think it's time. only two chapters because i chapters. feel like it's pretty quick okay yeah um so yeah, so the, the, the way it works is it, if you don't do that, uh, you don't even have the option to uh, when when Edel, Edelgard like attacks the, what is the tomb? Yeah. The tomb. The tomb and uh, so at first you side with, with uh, Rhea and the church to, to fight off Edelgard. But Rhea, after you beat Edelgard, Rhea wants to execute her for her crimes. And it's at that point you could be like, you know, you have the option if you go with uh edelgard to become the emperor of the adrestian empire you have the option to side with her or not let me uh, ask you real quick before you continue did you yeah. guys know edelgard was the flame emperor because i kind of i had no idea to be honest i did go. not know until my golden deer playthrough okay yeah no i don't know not i had no idea who it was but then of course i started my second playthrough and i was like oh look at all these hints yeah, yeah. <laughs> i wonder if you just don't get those when you're when you're playing as black eagles if it's meant to like keep you in the dark because i had no idea like i said until i started my golden deer playthrough that that she was the flame emperor yeah it was just i like... feel like the hints were there we just didn't put it yeah. together didn't pick up pick up yeah. on them yeah yeah i wouldn't have out of you told me to pick any character i would not have picked her to be honest no to have been the one pulling the strings like that so yeah when when you're going to uh so yeah then you have the option to either side with Rhea or side with edelgard uh Edel, edelgard edelgard um and apparently you take the vast majority of the students with you whichever side you choose so if you just do decide to um not side with edelgard everyone except huber i think remains loyal to uh edelgard everyone else stays loyal with you so uh, Mm -hmm. i thought that was an interesting distinction but yeah that you don't get that option if you don't uh if you don't help her become the emperor so what are your thoughts will go ahead the black eagle's house i have okay so for reference i am about two chapters away from finishing blue lions playthrough um and i feel like the black eagle story is awesome but i also feel like it's way too short i don't know if you guys got that same feeling because the black eagle's path is like four chapters short comparatively to the blue lions and the golden deer yeah it is it is the shortest that's the shortest route by like 20 hours which i don't understand why yeah i don't get why either because i feel like i understand like like we picked the route that happens to not be the default black eagle route but it should have been the default black eagle route i would think so i was under the impression it was Uh, no we had to trigger that weird thing to even get the option the default is to to side against her which is weird because like Edelgard is like the main marketing character. Yeah, that's the main pull for the Black Eagles. Yeah. So I, I I just I think that's crazy. Personally. 
Yeah, I mean, can you imagine not even knowing that that was there? Like, I would have, like you guys, I would have just assumed that that was the default playthrough and that's what you're supposed to do. I thought it was weird that it was a thing that you would even go against Edelgard. Like, I'm when I finally do have my Black Eagles playthrough where I go against her, that's going to be hard. Because at least when you're yeah. in another house, like, you don't have a choice. But here... I mean, I guess I'll just probably not go with her to become the emperor. So I don't even, I'm not even tempted to replay where I side with her again. Yeah. Cause, cause I could see myself her. doing that. I could too. <laughs> just cause I'll feel bad if I don't. I'll tell you when I started my blue line playthrough, it was very hard to go against any of the black Eagle students. I had a hard time. Yeah. How far are you in your blue lions playthrough? Will? Uh, I'm on the second to last chapter. I was gonna oh, try wow, and have okay. it done for today, but uh, with how crazy the week was, and like I'm playing on a harder difficulty, and I'm a little under leveled, so like I was having a little problems with the last one of the last fights. So I was like, I'll just deal with this. Maybe I might play tonight or tomorrow or something. Gotcha. But yeah. Um, yeah, so like I'm almost there. Um, I do want to say that I loved the ending for the Black Eagles playthrough where you inevitably like you end up killing Rhea or whatever and um, what happens is Byleth gets his heart back and like his hair turns from that like lime green back to that teal color. Like basically Byleth is like becoming human again as opposed to being kind of a puppet to the church. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. I like I really like that ending with like Edelgard there like supporting your character. I agree. Yeah, I, I loved the ending. Um, although, did, did you guys... Uh, I feel like I maybe talked to you about this at one other point, Will, but did you guys realize that your heart was the Crestone? Yes. Like, like before the end? Like, that was... I felt like that was, like, the first reveal to me, and that kind of, like, blew my mind. So, I yeah, no, I didn't really pick up on that um, until, like, right at the very end. Yeah. So. I was I was just like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because like you're the whole game, you're like, oh, you're missing the Crestone, but like you're the Crestone. Yeah, it's it's wild. And like the game also drops hints too, like that that your heart literally doesn't beat. Like you hear things about it before, and like yeah. I think there's one of the one of the supports with Dorothea, like she's teasing you, like one of the earlier earlier ones, like she's teasing you, and then she's like, "Is your heart not even beating?" And like the only <laughs> options you have to respond are both no. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just like serious no or a joke. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah. yeah. I guess the hint, the hint is definitely there there for that. But that's that's the biggest thing I've noticed. Like as I've started going through my second playthrough, is like all all the hints that are that are being dropped about stuff that we saw before. Like even even with it being the Blue Lions run. Yeah. So like um, they, it's a good story. They set they set stuff up really well. Did you guys think that Geralt's death was just you saw it coming? I like felt five nothing. billion miles away. Yeah, I feel bad. But <laughs> I, I felt literally nothing. I actually like when I restarted the game, I was like, oh yeah. I forgot about this guy. <laughs> yeah. I will say this, this. I will say the scene where you end up chasing Kranya and like you get locked away and then like you merge with Suthis and then slash through like the sky and come out like a that god. That is. I, that was really cool. Um, but like with Gerald dying, it was just like they telegraphed it pretty far away with him being like, "Oh, I have something important to tell you at the end of the month. I'll be back." It's and like, then he oh, keeps you're... saying, like, oh, if I die, if I die, I hit a thing in here in one specific place, but only if, if I die. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well. There was, there was no shock to that happening. I was like, he's super dead in a chapter or two. No, and his character wasn't developed at all. I did no. not care. Yeah. Do you, do, I mean, do you think that's partially on purpose? Because uh, Byleth and... and at least in my case, her her dad never uh, never had much of a relationship. You don't even really have the option to talk to him. Yeah, or yeah, he really says don't. he says like a line or two. Yeah, and he's he's either always gone or he's there and will say like one line to you after yeah. you train with him. Like I don't I don't understand why they even give you the heart up because you're not getting support. Yeah. yeah, like it's weird. Huh. I do wonder if they were gonna be doing something more with him and didn't have time to well who knows because, what the dlc is going to be 
the, well, playing the game, like, I think the Blue Lions playthrough has a little bit, like, I could tell that the Blue Lions, like, story, they worked on that part first of the game, just by how many more, yeah. like, cutscenes there are, and how there's more chapters, and how, like, things seem a little bit more fleshed out, whereas the Black Eagles, as much as I loved the story and thought it was awesome, like, they constantly talk about, like, the ones who slither in the dark, but, like, you don't end up killing any of them. They no. just kind of, like, exist. And you're like, well, what? what are, these are bad guys. Like, they're the ones pulling the strings with all of it, and you don't do anything with them. Like, yeah. Even the other playthroughs, like, like, I'm assuming you deal with them. I don't know for sure, like, in the Golden Deer, but, you know? I would freaking hope so. Because, like, that, that really bugged me. Like, we ended up getting four chapters less when they could have spent those four chapters to go off and take care of the actual threat. Yeah. And instead of just saying they took care of the actual threat and then lived happily ever after. <laughs> yeah. Like sure. yeah. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if they are gonna flesh that out in the DLC. Maybe maybe that that was it was it's supposed to happen at you know, that's the DLC is after after you deal with Rhea, uh, you know, as the head of the church and this giant dragon thing. If if then it's it's chasing down the the threats. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I bought the season pass, so I'll play it. I will be buying it. I'm going to, yeah, definitely. I finished the game and I bought it immediately. I couldn't help myself. (laughs) How did you want to say? Go ahead, Dan. I was just going to ask you guys how you felt about Hubert. I still hate Hubert. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I did not like his. I don't like the whole. I'm going to do what I think is good for you, even if you don't think it's good for you. Shtick. That really freaks me out, and it freaked me out the entire game. I swear, I thought I thought he was gonna try to kill me at some point in the game, just because if too. if he if he even thought you were like a threat yeah, to to Edelgard, yeah, that I he would argue, try to knock you. Other... What's that? Well, sorry, I cut out. I was I did not even bother using Hubert in any of the fights. So yeah, I just didn't. I didn't either. I did, I I used him, but I did only because I was short on characters for for this i for most of the most of the time i was down one character oh, yeah, uh, because right. i lost bernadette and i never uh, i ended up getting lysithia uh, at some point when i was fighting the golden deer uh, but she if she wasn't powerful enough to do anything at that point i couldn't level her up fast enough to be effective and you missed out on the uh, staff members too, didn't you? Uh, I got Shamir. Shamir was the one, the one, okay. uh, the one that I got. But, but you, you weren't able to get uh, Manuela and. No, I didn't get anyone staff. else. Okay. I didn't know I would, I would need them, but uh, so, I think... so for my gold deer playthrough, I've, I've been better about making sure I have characters, okay. even, even if I just have a few, you know, uh, meat shields, I guess. Yeah. Hilda, Hilda, Hilda. <laughs> Hilda's good. So I love Hilda. She might be my favorite character in the game right now, actually. Nice. So uh, actually, I was gonna say my favorite character arc in the game is definitely Dimitri. I'm not far enough to feel that way yet. Oh man. I'm Wait. not. I'm not. I'm not to the time skip yet. I I, I barely played any uh, this week. Uh, Dimitri post time skip is. <laughs> He's quite something. It's just funny. It's just like he becomes the friend who yells insane things when you're having like a serious conversation and everybody <laughs> just ignores him. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's definitely got my favorite character arc. I'm like because like he comes off as a traditional lord, and like as you play the story more and more, you just see how everything unfolds with them, and it's just like wow, this is, this is going places. So he's not as boring as he is at first glance, huh? No, not yeah. He's he's not at all. And I gotta say that, like, the main characters for each house, they do a good job. Like, I know everyone loves Claude. Because, yeah, I was uh, just gonna say that. Um, Claude's doing really interesting things in the Golden Deer playthrough. He's, he, and he started it before the before the time skip, but he's starting to dig in and investigate some of the weird stuff that the church is doing and become, like, distrustful of Rhea. Uh, even yeah. though you're kind of, you're, you're kind of still the church's, uh, I mean, after Rhea disappears, uh, at least in the in the Golden Deer, like your your Byleth is the the head of the church. Um, so even though you are the head of the church, like Claude is still trying to dig in and investigate some of the some of the weird stuff and secrets that they're that they're keeping from people. So, mm-hmm. 
it's 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 pretty pretty interesting what what the, what they're doing with that. that yeah. It, now, well, now I understand why people have suggested that be your second or third playthrough. Then, the the golden deer. The golden deer. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, really, like the blue lions and black eagles stories, like they're not the same, but they're like counter each other like uh -huh. the different sides of the same conflict where it seems like the golden deer is more of a like wow well, what's really going on sure. sort of thing um just like the first two houses just fight each other while the golden deer are the ones that are just like trying to trying to solve everything it seems like yeah i know um you know in in uh the for the black eagles playthrough they're you know claude ho holds everything together through like uh you know, uh, they they try to main, maintain neutrality, before, you know, so they don't get invaded or whatever. Uh, Claude is kind of the the backbone of all that, you know, keeping 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 them out of the fighting until Byleth comes back. Um, it's it's kind of the same in uh, in in when you actually do the the Golden Deer playthrough, um, because they they don't really get involved in the conflict until until Byleth comes back, but. Uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 really interesting what he what he's he's able to do. Um, I, I won't get get too much into it, but yeah, it's he's a he's a very interesting character. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, that again, a... they're kind of the misfit island of the misfit toys. The the whole the yeah. whole group, like it's it's the only group you can recruit his like supposed like uh, champion or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Like I um, got Hilda as a blue lion. Yeah. Yeah, because Hilda is the second, right? Like the it's supposed to be. Yeah. The, like yeah. Retainer. Hilda's Hilda's brother is like a really powerful, uh, like commander. Yeah. So she's oh, is, she's similar. Uh, the guy that starts with an H. I can't remember his name. Holst. I don't remember it either. Might, yeah, be, Holst. might be Holst. Um, I so. also want to say I do like Edelgard's character a lot because she's very divisive. Um, like the. The developer of the game talked about wanting to make it got a very divisive character and like on reddit i see very long arguments still whether edelgard was justified in her starting the war uh -huh. like, which she actual, was like people fighting <laughs> about it she which definitely really cool. was oh yeah definitely but like it's cool when you play like a different playthrough it seems like byleth is the keeps everybody sane like if you're doing the church route Rhea is more sane if you're doing the blue lions you know route Dimitri seems more sane if you do the black eagles route you kind of keep Edelgard more sane because like when Byleth leaves and fights them they kind of go crazy the main characters uh, of the other houses except Claude Claude seems to be the only one who keeps it together throughout the game yeah well we like I mean think about all of the decisions that we made on the Edelgard route of like whether to kill Claude or not, like mm -hmm. a lot of those a lot of those places where I assume her default is kill, like we we had the opportunity to not do that and keep her yeah. level. Mm -hmm. um, so I, that that makes sense to me. Like I, again, I'm not post time skip yet, but I'm I'm sure Berg, I'm going to end up with the same the same choices with Dimitri, mm -hmm. like able to hold him back from that you know that edge there. Byleth is important. Yeah, no, it's just because huh. you know he gets the constant praise from everybody. He's like literally the the teacher everyone loves, and he does keep everybody kind of together. Yeah, cool. this is a really cool thing from a story perspective. It I is. think it is for sure because most games don't do something like that. Yeah, I should say too. Um, well, going back to the Edelgard thing and whether she was she was justified, like. I was kind of creeped out by Rhea and the church stuff, like even before you got too far into the the actual weird stuff the church was doing. And I I never really liked Rhea that much. I thought she was um, a little bit fake. Uh, yeah, but but definitely hiding something and a little bit creepy. Yeah, yeah. Did you get any of her support conversations? I think just the first one. Because even just the first one is creepy as hell. Yeah, I, 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 she made me very uneasy the entire game. Um, yeah. So a, again, when I, when the time comes when I'm doing a Black Eagles playthrough where I actually side with, with Ray, it's gonna be, it's gonna be very difficult. Yeah. Just because I, I would definitely like personally side with, with Edelgard, and I, I'm, I'm interested to see how it all shakes out. 
uh you know with the with the golden deer playthrough like what if if you have any say in the matter if 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 ray even comes back because she's been missing the entire time so oh wow yeah um for what it's worth i have heard the black eagles route that we didn't take like the church route uh-huh. is really good okay so oh wow worth worth going back to and playing yeah, I mean, I can't imagine, like, all those people that are sworn to Edelgard, like, actually siding with Byleth in the church, and yeah. not with her, that's crazy. the people that just, like, wanted to side with Edelgard, want that decision, and didn't didn't talk to Edelgard three missions before yeah. the time skip? Like, <laughs> yeah, the one time they didn't go talk to everyone in the game. Yeah, like, could you imagine if we had missed that? Like, like getting to that point and not having the option. I yeah, would, I probably would have been livid. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would have been upset too. Does anybody else like how Sudeth is the only person who's just like, why? Are we you you cut out, Will, but I th- I think I think I know what you were saying. That Sudeth is the only one that questions why we're letting a random mercenary be a head teacher oh, yeah. at yeah. just War Academy. Yeah. yeah. He's the only one who's like, no, like, why are we doing this? And then everyone's just like, no, shut up, it's alright. <laughs> no, it's cool, we trust Raya, she's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gerald raised him, Gerald, this man with no character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was bizarre to me. I was like, well, at least Seth is the only one who's trying to, like, keep you from being way over your head for an unqualified position yeah you're, you're absolutely right well i never really thought about that but yeah i mean that would only make sense Just, you're letting a stranger who you don't know how old they are you don't know where they came from yeah teach your no teach your he doesn't know how old he is like... yeah yeah exactly Te- <laughs> teach your noble students uh noble and or important students you know that's that's, that's that is a very weird thing especially with the the uh prince the soon to be emperor and the soon to be leader of the alliance like yeah. Yeah. it's like ah let's just let him do it whatever yep it's like Good stuff. this strange man let's put him in the perfect position to become a puppet master like <laughs> all right but i do want to say like i am looking forward to getting to the golden deer playthrough because i thoroughly enjoyed my 115 ish hours oh wow Fire Emblem. that's Man. a lot <laughs> I have some idle time in there, but it's been, I would say I've definitely put over a hundred. And... Um, I'm, I think I have like 83, which again uh-huh. is not as much as I would have liked. Um, if my son hadn't been hogging our joy cons all week, it would have been more, but, uh, I did want to say too, that Corey ended up getting fire emblem. <laughs> what do you think? Do we know? I don't, I think he likes it. I haven't talked to him much about it. I, I wanted to have him, uh, you know, come on and talk about it in person. But uh, from what I gather, he likes it. He picked the blue blue lions first. Okay. Yeah. So, and he did explain his decision. He said uh, Dimitri was the house leader that annoyed him the least, and he's the the characters that they have uh, seemed like the most interesting to him. So that was his reasoning. I could definitely see uh, that for the students. I really like the blue house or blue lions kids. I think he said the Blue Lions, his exact quote, was the house that pissed him off the least. Yes. That... I think that's how he <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. That's I don't know who he was there. talking about that bothered him and the other two. Hubert? Probably Hubert. <laughs> I, it was, I think it was Hubert. I think, I think he was annoyed by Claude, too. I could I, see being annoyed which by I could Claude, because Claude annoyed me a little bit. I'm yeah. sure he's a lot better when you start the, the Golden Deer stuff. Yeah, like he's, he did not. He did not endear himself to me at all. <laughs> he's uh, he's he's the same, but you realize there's more to him than than that. Like okay. I said, with it, with with right. his whole investigating the church and 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 being interested in crests and stuff, it, it, there's a lot more to him than than the you know easygoing kind of jokester party boy okay. type of thing. Uh, all right. Do we have any any other anything else we wanted to cover for Black Eagles? Uh, spoiler. No, that's all I got. Yeah, I 
think that's it for me too. Yeah, same here. I'm sure we'll be talking more about uh, about more more Fire Emblem. I, ideally, I would like to do another one of these after I've played through all the storylines. Um, so maybe we can kind of plan on doing that at some point in the future, probably quite a bit later in the future, and after everything has come together and we've we've seen all seen all angles of things. Yeah, I'd be down. Okay. I gotta I gotta finish Awakening of Fates first. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because I I have to do uh, Blue Lions, and then I like you said, I want to do the Black Eagles with the siding with Rhea playthrough. So uh, it would be maybe even early next year before oh, we. Oh yeah, it's it's gonna be a while. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because of the the falls loaded with stuff that's coming out. Yeah. So. And I want to try the DLC for Three Houses too. Do you know what it's the first one? Might be next month, actually. Oh really? Okay, I'll yeah, have to I'm look gonna, into that. I'm gonna look that up real fast for okay. you. Yeah, I'm interested. Maybe maybe if they have a name for it too, I, that could give us a clue on what it might be about. Yeah, check in. Uh, it just says additional auxiliary battle maps um some support items and some more stuff is sh- will will be coming by october 31st okay um and then there's going to be another wave of additional quests and stuff um and a, a free update by the end of the year okay so. so so two two waves of dlc by the end of the year and then a last one with new story content more playable characters locations a whole bunch of other stuff is going to come out uh sometime next spring Oh, all right. So yeah, they've got they've got three little waves planned here. Cool, I like the sound of that. Uh, one last thing before we go: when are they going to be adding characters from this to Smash Brothers? Oh man! If I were to guess, I think Edelgard will be the only one that gets in. Okay. Byleth, Byleth is crazy popular. Yeah, it could be Byleth too. I don't know. Yeah, actually, it'd either be Edelgard or By- Byleth if I were to guess. I, I think I, I feel like they would do Byleth because they could do male and female version, just do a costume swap. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, true. Um, and they've already started throwing three houses characters into Fire Emblem Heroes too. I saw that. I should pro- I should pick that up again and play it. I'm I really enjoy it. Yeah. Like you know something to do on my lunch break. I play about an hour a day. Yeah. So that would that would scratch my Fire Emblem itch that I have at night when I can't play my switch because i can't yeah, fall asleep. And, it, and it really does kind of scratch it like it's yeah. way simple but like there's something about it that's really fun yeah maybe i'll download that again okay any any last thoughts before we call it an episode uh no i think that's it okay will nah, i got nothing okay oh i forgot to say this oh dang it i should have said it earlier but uh, if, if anyone's still listening, I, I forgot. I don't know when we're going to have next week's episode because uh, starting Tuesday night, me and Corey are... I should have talked about this earlier because people haven't played Fire Emblem. I'll tweet it. Um, me and Corey are going to be playing uh, World of Warcraft Classic. We're going to be doing uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 9.30 to midnight uh, on, on Twitch. So uh, if we can get in, I don't know. Apparently the servers are going to be overloaded so maybe we'll try to log in earlier and, and see but we're going to be playing some some wow Dude, going I, in... will, I will join you guys for wow classic okay yeah we're uh 9 30 to midnight like i said tuesday wednesday thursday uh we're going in completely blind i've probably played five or ten hours of warcraft world of warcraft in my life so um i don't i don't know what to expect i did you haven't nerds. read much on it what's that you nerds yeah uh, but I'm super pumped for it. So, uh, I like I said, I'll be tweeting that and, and mentioning it. So if anyone wants to watch, uh, a couple of noobs go in completely blind to World of Warcraft Classic, then tune in for that. Uh, Eric, you're, yeah, you're welcome to join us if you'd like. Yeah, I'll definitely join you because I, I was going to check out WoW Classic anyway, so I'll hop in. Yeah, we I'll. Can, uh, we can guild. <laughs> yes, we could. I'll uh, let you know the details once we uh, once we iron stuff out. But yeah, it'll be about roughly nine thirty to midnight, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We've got to figure out what server we're going to be on, uh, whether they're going to be Horde or Alliance, what race. So ideally, we can all like be together starting off right off the bat. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I'll I'll let you know all that information. 
So yeah, that'll do it for episode 422 of the Thumbstick Athletes Podcast. I'm your host, Dan. I'm well. I'm Eric. Thanks for listening, and get out of my basement.